Hi students, welcome back to another great week. Um, I hope that you are finding that the course is easier to navigate through and that you're getting a basic understanding of where to go. Um, today we are going to be talking about your first major assignment, your annotated bibliography that is going to lead to your, um, your first essay assignment. So I'm not going to have my camera on because we're going to be clicking on a lot of different links today. And I think this will be the, the easiest way for us to go about this. So right here in your course page under course reading materials, you can click on that and then you're going to find your essay information for your annotated bibliography and first essay assignment handout. I'd like you to click on that and open that document. There we go. And we're gonna carefully go through this together. Why are you currently attending Gaston College? Amongst us, this college is helping shape and mold America's future teachers, farmers, cosmetologists, scholars, researchers, medical professionals, etc. However, Many students begin their career paths and spend countless hours of their lives educating themselves only to find that they were created for another field of expertise. Together, we are going to discover the truth about your field. What qualities will the right candidate embody to be a good teacher, farmer, cosmetologist, etc.? Your first essay is gonna answer this question. You will research those character traits and you will, you will argue what makes the perfect candidate for your particular field of interest. Your thesis statement will mirror this idea. Patience, dedication, organization skills, interpersonal skills, and personal commitment create the ideal candidate for a great middle school teacher. What components of the career require certain character qualities? It is your job to sell your career path to the right candidate and audience. Through our research, you will support those character qualities with sound research and writing. We will work together to help you feel more confident about using the internet to find scholarly sources, to utilize the library resource, and to understand the difference between true scholastic research and opinion-based articles. You, uh, you got to see a glimpse of that um, earlier on in the lecture. I hope that you took the time to read through those notes and to really watch Calvin Craig's really phenomenally crafted uh, library research YouTube video. He really walks you through the ins and outs of that resource. Before we begin jumping into this short research essay, you will create an annotated bibliography to grasp a better understanding of secondary sources. What is an annotated bibliography, you might ask? An annotated bibliography is a list of citations, including books, articles, and other secondary sources. With each listing, you will have a brief description that depicts the accuracy, relevance, and quality of your research. For example, you may have a scholastic journal article that indicates the psychology behind teaching to support your ideas. But then you may have a blog that shares a direct quote for additional support. This annotated bibliography gives you an opportunity to organize your research and discover what might be helpful and what is not. Your annotated bibliography needs to include the following proper MLA format, and we're going to look at an example of that today, at least six sources, and four of those six sources need to be published, peer-reviewed academic sources. We're also going to take a look at what that is today. We will discuss this more in class. Please see the course schedule for the timeline regarding due dates. After you complete that annotated bibliography, you will begin crafting your first short research essay. Your essay should include the following. You will use proper MLA format. You will have four to five pages in length and at least three character qualities need to be in your body paragraphs. However, you're welcome to have more. The essay needs to be a full four pages. Your work cited does not count as a page. 
Your works cited page should have at least six sources and four of those need to be peer reviewed. Essentially, you're gonna be using the same sources that you gather in your annotated bibliography that you're gonna be using for this short research essay. However, it's completely fine if you decide to get rid of one of those sources or if you choose to create additional sources. The only requirement is that you must have six and four must be peer reviewed. Correctly documented in-text citations, and we're going to talk more about that next week. This week, we're going to focus more on creating the actual work cited page within your annotated bibliography. Correct grammar, mechanics, and collegiate level diction, which we'll discuss in more depth. And no first or second person language. We are academic writers, which means that we must write in an unbiased, methodical way. Please do not use I, myself, my, you, your, or yours. Third person language only. Please review your lecture materials if you have any questions about what this entails. Please note the due dates for this essay on the course schedule and course information. Together, we will be working on your thesis, your body paragraphs, your transitions, and summation sentences, etc. The writing process is crucial to your success in this course. And if you need a refresher on that, please make sure that you take a look at your week one lecture materials. So basically in a nutshell, students, you're gonna be creating an annotated bibliography first. That annotated bibliography is gonna help you gather sources to write this first essay. So for example, let's say that you wanna be a teacher. You might be gathering sources that talk about compassion, empathy, cultivating a great classroom culture, trust, respect, all the qualities that you believe create the ideal teacher. That might look very different from those of you who think that you're going to be a nurse or a doctor. Those people may be looking for sources that talk about being ethical, that talk about being analytical, methodical. Essentially, you are creating research that is going to sell what the ideal candidate in your field needs to possess. What character qualities make them a great candidate? Now, before we continue to uh, get into that, I want to take you to this research page. And I want to walk you through an example of an annotated bibliography. So right here, I found a great article through our library uh, resource page. And again, please make sure you've watched the lecture given by Calvin Craig earlier on in the weekly folder. And this article relates to successful teaching by outstanding professors, because if I were in y'all's shoes and I were writing this, I would be writing a paper over what creates a great professor. So let's pretend that I've already gone through and I've read this article, I've highlighted some details, I have an idea of what the article is about, and I've decided that yes, this is indeed going to be a great uh, source for my research and my paper. So here's the great news about using a library resource. You have this wonderful tool that says cite right here that you can click and it creates your citation for you. So uh, what I've done is I've copied and pasted that into a Word document, but I also wanna show you what you can do if you don't have access to that wonderful tool. Because if you choose to use a non-peer reviewed source, which I do allow you to do, I just ask that you use four peer reviewed sources, then you might be looking at a blog or a website or something that doesn't have that easy tool access to cite your source. In that case, you would go to your ebook located in your course uh, reading materials. It's under the ebook section. And I'm going to show you an example using this article, what you would do. So what I did is uh, I went to chapter 56 in the textbook, 
which gives an MLA style for a complete work cited. Guys, this gives you every example from articles that skip pages, articles in newspapers, print journals, magazines, sacred text, which could include the Bible, more than one publisher's name, books that are part of a series, multi-volume works, graphic narratives or comic strips, translations, anthologies, print books, literally um, the world is your oyster with this list as far as creating um, citations for your annotated bibliography. And the great news is by completing those citations for your annotated bibliography, what you're really doing is you're creating your work cited page uh, that goes at the end of your paper. So you're already doing some of the work. But just using this example, um, so the article that I found is an academic article and it's in a database, uh, particularly the one that I used is ProQuest. So let's say you didn't have that great citation tool that we talked about and that I showed you using the library page. What you can do is you can come to your ebook and you take a look at what information you need to create that citation. And the wonderful part about this is it gives you a brief overview for an article that is available in print, but you can access in an online database, such as an academic search premiere, begin with the names of the author, the title of the work, the title of the periodical, the volume and issue, the date of publication of the print version of the work, and give the page numbers for the print version. Then give the name for the online database and the location, a DOI or another stable link. The source map below shows where to find that information from the work in the database. It gives you a great example of what it should look like when you're done. And then the MLA source map literally shows you where you can find this information. And then by each number located right here, the author, the article title, it shows you where those should go in your citation. It also shows you proper punctuation, what you can do to show that this is an article, and in this case, that's quotation marks, versus a periodic, periodical title, which should be in italics. It shows you where the commas go, where periods go, and then it even gives you an example of what it means by the DOI or the URL at the end. So the wonderful news is, even if you don't have that great site link, such as the library offers, you have this wonderful textbook that literally breaks down what you need for every single part of a citation. So there's really no excuse to not know uh, what information you need. However, I know there's a lot of times where it gets very overwhelming trying to create citations and you know that you are always welcome to reach out and I'll be glad to point you in the right direction and show you what resources you can use to find that information. And then what I also want you to see is they also give you a little map down here to show you where to find this information just like Oh, sorry about that. Just like our article here. So what I've done from this point, and I'm gonna give you a new share so that you can see what I've done here. So I've taken this article and I copied and pasted the information using that site tool to create my citation. So as you can see, I have the author's names. And what I want you to notate is last names are first here. I have the article title, which is in quotation marks. I have the title of the journal, which is in italics. I have the volume number. I have the issue number, the year it was published, the page numbers, 
the database that I found it from. And then for this particular one, there was a URL link. Now, what I want you to notice is when you create this citation, you have what we call a hanging indention. If you don't know how to do a hanging indention, I've created a really uh, great YouTube video that shows you how to do that in Microsoft Word. And then below this citation, I've written a very short summary that gives an overview of what the article is, uh, what it's about, and how it's going to apply to my essay. This study, written by Jeanette Rossetti and Patricia Fox, emphasizes the key character qualities and traits that are imperative for outstanding teaching at the collegiate level. These researchers gathered data from 35 professors that received numerous teaching awards. They viewed their teaching philosophies and interviewed each of them to decipher the standards and practices that these professors were consistently displaying. Interestingly enough, many of them emphasized the necessity of being present with students, showing great enthusiasm in the classroom, and creating a climate of trust and respect for the students' individual needs. While this article focuses on teaching in the nursing field, after further investigation, these authors found that many of these practices exist across discipline amongst undergraduate and graduate courses. This article is valuable as I create a paragraph that argues the importance of interpersonal relationships amongst students, as well as cultivating a particular classroom culture. Guys, if you're asking yourself, well, why would I do this before writing the paper? After you've done so much research, it's really challenging to remember what you read about in certain articles. What the annotated bibliography does is it, first of all, go, it creates the citations that you're going to be using for your work cited page at the end of your essay. But then it also gives you this summary that helps you remember what the article is about so that as you're crafting these paragraphs, you know which articles to reference back to to help support those ideas. So essentially what I want you to realize is that at the end of this week, you should know how to find research through the Gaston College Library, how to cite research, where to go if you do not know how to cite certain types of research, whether it's an online database, a website, uh, you have a great source uh, right there in your ebook. And then finally, how to begin writing a summary for these annotated um, bibliography entries. And we're going to talk more about what a summary looks like and the ins and outs of that next week. But I do want to give you a brief overview so that if you'd like to work ahead and start working on this, that's something that you can do. One more thing that I would like to show you is this great site called easybib.com. So what EasyBib allows you to do is if you do use a website or a blog, you can create a citation. You can choose what kind of source, and for, for this purpose, we're going to say that we're going to use a website. And then you can actually put the website in there. So let's say that we did, I'll just use whatever I cited last time and search. And then you can click on cite. And it will actually cite uh, whatever information you need for you. Now, one of the things that you really have to be careful about, and not just with this site, but also with the library website, check the work behind you. Make sure that they put in the right article title. Make sure that they put in the correct author's name. Make sure that it's the correct website title, the day it was published. And if there's any missing information, go back and look at the website and see if you can fill in those gaps. And then all you would do in this case is complete your citation and copy and paste it just as you did with the library resource.
And then the last thing that I just want to reemphasize, guys, this is really the key to everything. Um, as you're searching for articles, Really be careful about the keywords that you use. Um, I know Calvin mentioned this, but I just want to reemphasize it. You don't want to be too specific where you skew your research, but at the same time, you want to be specific enough so that you're weeding out articles that don't matter. So for example, here's just a few things that I might try. Teaching character qualities. And then over here on your left hand toolbar, you can always make sure that you click full text online, as well as scholarly and peer reviewed research and that will go ahead and eliminate some of the articles that won't be as helpful for you. And then one great thing that you can do is you can always click on preview and it will give you just a brief overview of each article as you're starting to look through them. So, for example, if I click on this one. And again, uh, I have the abstract here where I can skim through that. But the other thing I really want you guys to know is just this wonderful citation link that I showed you early on. All right, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great understanding of what you should be researching. Really brainstorm and come up with ideas over what creates a great candidate for your particular field. Uh, what does your field require of somebody? Uh, that's really where you start. And when you have those words in your head and you've narrowed it down between three to five characteristics, then you can really begin great research. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I look forward to working with you this week. Have a great week.